All right, so let's see. <clears throat> so we turn this off. So I don't always get a chance to um, go up rate portable, so it's kind of fun to screw around and set up in the backyard. And um, today we're gonna use the G90. I haven't used it in a while, quite a while actually. So, and here I've got one of these guys and I've used these hobby connectors. I just like them. And then I've got adapters just so I can go to the Anderson power poles if I need to. Um, most, most of my low power portable stuff, I don't use Andersons on. This is the uh, data cable that I made for this radio, but um, won't be using it today. We just need this flimsy little power wire that came with it. But apparently the gauge of this is like, let's see, 18 gauge wire? You would think you'd need more than that for 20 watts. I mean, like, it's pretty small. They use bigger wire for CB radios, but they don't put out 20 watts. <laughs> so, I've always thought that was sort of strange. One of the things about the G90, I'm like, well, why do they have such a small power cord? Um, anyway, it is what it is. So I've wrapped this with a drawer liner so that if I set it on some, you know, it's going to sit there, grips, and we're not going to have issues with it sliding around or getting scratched up. So, take this here, we have the hobby connector right there, and um, put this on top. And then we'll probably take this, two of these, and then now we can actually just go ahead and use this with that, and we'll be able to see how much we're drawing when we transmit. So when we're hooked up to a battery, I'll know, you know, what I got left, how much power I'm drawing, and all that good stuff. So, I, I love these things. They used to be only, like, from, like, Hobby King or whatever. Um, MFJ and HRO sells them, but they're overpriced. So, just look on Amazon for 150 amp, uh, you know, version. I don't remember what they're called. If I get a chance, I'll, I'll look it up and put a link in the video. I don't know if anybody that's interested in one of those. So let's make sure we can see the radio really good. Let me uh, get in a little closer. Because you guys just want to see the radio. You don't need to see me. Oops. Let me kick the tripod. Yeah. The sun is so bright. I actually can't tell if the power is on here. I say that probably not. Okay, I gotta go back and make sure the other cord is plugged in. All right, so. I got my copy, my coffee here, and a little thing just blew in it. Just in case a bear tries to attack me, uh, I can throw my coffee at him. Yeah, that's gonna work, right? So, I don't know if you guys have seen this debates about the bear attacks and stuff in my area. Anyway, yeah, these guys couldn't stop talking about it and they all became sudden experts on bears. Is what it is. Is it still not on us? I can't see it. I've had problems with this thing before. That's strange. It's so bright out here, I just really can't tell what the hell's going on.
Okay. Apparently, it's like everything, every time I try and operate portable, nothing works like it's supposed to. So this is right on par for practicing for portable. All right, let's try this again. Okay. So it is working now. I really kind of doubt you guys are going to be able to see the screen on here. Might have to do something different. So I'm on my actual loop antenna because um, just out of convenience. Yeah, you're not going to be able to see it unless I hold it up over there. So right now we're picking up the Maritime Mole Mat. And the screen is kind of hard to read in the sunlight. The sun is like over to my uh, left. So it's not quite direct. Let me refresh myself with this. Now one reason to use the tuner even if you're just listening, is it improves the signal. And so this was my big complaint with the Yesu um, FT991A. A lot of people don't know this about the Yesu. The tuner only works on transmit. So if you have a mismatched antenna and you push the tuner, it doesn't actually help to pull in weak stations on receive. And I saw it that that was a, just like a, a deal breaker for me for that radio so I sold it I don't know why in the hell would you go through the trouble of putting an automatic antenna tuner in a radio and then make it to where it only works on transmit so if you have a bad antenna or an antenna that's not resonant you know you'll get a better signal if you tune it you know I mean, like, if you're using a manual antenna tuner, that's how you would tune it. You would first tune it by ear. So, it's just stupid. Way to go, Yesu. So, anyway, this one has a really good tuner in it. I'm not really hearing these guys very well. A lot of guys put this weird oversized knob on these. I'm uh, sitting at a different step. So the way this one is, is uh, if it's highlighted like that, that's where it's going to step through. And then, uh, if I remember correctly, you just push the button and it'll change. Yeah. Probably not. This is one of the reasons I hate when people use half frequencies. Because like a radio like this, like I've got to step through the frequencies and then, you know, it's just silly. We have all this spectrum that we don't use. Why do we need to use half frequencies? If I'm on 14273.5 and somebody's near me, that 0.5 isn't going to make the difference between bleeding and not bleeding. So let's just stick to even frequencies. It's hot out here, it's like about 85 degrees. Okay, let's try a different man. Okay, run. We have the usual FT8.